Hmm, my people, I sure say if I ne come across this video where I won't play give on a soul. Hmm, maybe I ne go come finally change their mind, come do the right thing. Now they don't they drag I neck left and right. So this one no be say now only lawyers they go court again. Go they ask court say may court say I neck may they get access to so 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 this one no. But right now, Arise TV, Hero Five, don't they use their platform to they drag I neck? Who say I neck? You must hear word. Do the right things. Do the right things. If on a hand clean, waiting they make or not. No let other candidates get access to the election materials. What you on the hide? What you on the hide? What you make on the delay? If on a no get anything when the hide, make on a come outside, make na do the right thing. Now then they challenge I neck. Say I neck enough is enough. Say they no go let this matter just go like that. They want to see the truth of the matter. How I neck they do. All these results, they won't see the, the exactly re result of different polling units from INEC. They won't make INEC give them access to the election material so that they go feel get evidence so they go feel present for inside court because INEC they deny Peter will be access from these election materials, even when court talk say make INEC allow Labour Party. Now, Erufai don't they don't they use their platform till they drag INEC and the APC people say enough is enough. And on I must hear what by force. I mean the truth has to be told. With due respect, we don't need American former ambassadors to come and tell us that we had flawed elections. I think it's just like petting people at the back if they have to remind us. We knew what happened. Even INEC came out to say they had glitches. They had problems. They had technical glitches. But the shocking thing is that INEC has not been able to explain the nature of problems they had. And hopefully INEC is still reviewing those problems they had. Because the basic question people have constantly asked INEC is that what happened, why was... Why did we not use the IREV and get real-time results as I went due? But INEC has not been able to answer that question. They just say technical glitch. Technical glitch is not good enough. Let us know what truly happened. And for the love of mercy, INEC too should also learn to respect the court orders. Don't stop any political party from inspecting the materials out there. The court has ruled on that. Let them inspect the material. We need transparency to be able to wade through this process. But the sad reality is that we don't learn. We are back here again, exactly where we were 40 years ago in 83. Because we forget in a hurry, it was that same election that led Fela to sing Teacher Don't Teach Me Nonsense in 86. Where he said, now the second election, now he was, he passed. Babala nonsense, how people not go vote. We're going to get millions to millions. It was that same election that tainted the credibility of the chief justice of Bender State that was said to be an upright man, justice of your whiskey. That same elections with Fedeco. Because we don't learn, we don't we forget things in a hurry. All the controversies about that same election in 83 are the things that are playing out. The only difference slash is the technological interplay. We heard about money and bribery. We remember the famous interview with Justice Ovie Whiskey. When he was asked, the water pass under the bridge, he said, if I see one million Naira cash, I will faint. We have not forgotten those things. And those are the nascent problems we have with our democracy because we don't learn. And I think really we choose not to learn because we have institutional, you know, cataloging in abundance. But we just choose not to learn. So if we are just waking up because some foreigners are coming to tell us that our elections are flawed after the West has made mockery of our electoral system, then we know that they are just petting us on the back. The question is, what are we going to do to ensure it changes? And are we on the right path? Hell no. Because if we want to be on the right path, we will allow the parties to inspect the materials used for the elections in the first place. Not whipping up any level of discrepancy. We will show our organizational competence. 
We will learn how to speak to the people. I watched the interview yesterday with some INEC rep. And it falls short. So we have not learned. And if we don't learn, things will continue the way they are. 40 years after, almost the same scenarios. Ayo, what well, say you? Yeah, another just agreeing with what some other personalities and agencies have said with regards to the February 25 presidential election. These, um, the ambassador Mark Green and Johnny Carson, both um, U.S. envoys, have also aligned with what their, the U.S. ambassador to Nigeria, Mary Beth Leonard, has said. And also Chatham House in England has said what some international observers have said or observed about the elections of February 25. They've said it's been fraught with irregularities. That's a word we've heard a number of times with regards to that particular election. However, what I really like in terms of, the, of this article is where they talk about the role that Nigeria plays as the biggest democracy and the biggest economy in Africa and being, as we often call Nigeria, the big brother of Africa, whereby other countries in Africa can take a borrow leaf from or learn lessons from. Therefore, they all, you know, in that article, they talk about the fact that the importance of this election and the conduct of the elections is due to the fact that other other democracies can learn. In fact, uh, Nigeria is said to be by 2015 one of the biggest in terms of population around the world. So this is not just the biggest democracy in Africa, but the biggest democracy, one of the biggest democracies in the world. Also, I also am grateful that they touched on what the president-elect should start to look at in terms of forming an inclusive government. They analyzed the election electoral process and just talked about some of the shortcomings which we've already highlighted on this show. However, very critical as well, and the reason why we must continue to have these conversations is the impact or perhaps the lessons we can learn from what happened on February 25 going forward in terms of the elections to come in a few days. Six days' time, we're going to go to the polls again, this time to elect uh, governors and also uh, members of the state house of assemblies. They also talk about the impact on other elections across Africa. But let's um, bring it back home in terms of some of the lessons that we can learn. Again, we've talked about this a number of times, but I think it's important to reiterate this because the whole world, as we've seen, is watching. Nigerians are watching and the enthusiasm and the numbers in terms of people who went out to exercise their franchise is evidence enough to show that Nigerians are really taking this election cycle very seriously. So the first lesson perhaps from the from the last election, which a number of people have talked about, is the process, the management of uh, INEX management of the entire process. We've talked about right from the point of registration to vo uh, of, of voters to the point of going out to ex you know to vote. It was marred with irregularities. Uh, we had the issue around even being able to register. A number of people said they were disenfranchised because they couldn't um, register and they couldn't obtain their permanent voters card. The ruling last week from Justice Obiawa Iguatu uh, with two Nigerians was sort of a game changer in the sense that now he ruled that both of them alone could use their temporary voters card to vote in the next elections. And then he brought up the question as to what is, why can't INEC or what, why is INEC so opposed to Nigerians using their TVCs? Bearing in mind that when you register for your temporary voters card, your database is, you know, you are then registered on the INEC database. It's almost as if when you have a, 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 a temporary driver's license, you're able to use it until your permanent driver's license is available. Why? Because your data is already on the system. But INEC have said that they're going to contest this. Again, the question for them is why? Why are they opposing it? Because in so doing, a lot more Nigerians will then have access to vote and less Nigerians will be disenfranchised. Beyond that, to talk about security, I'm grateful that the director of security at INEC will be joining us later in the show to give assurances of the next election. But they did this at, during the presidential election. Unfortunately, the reality didn't quite it wasn't quite consistent with what they had promised. And then finally, I'll just say in terms of punitive measures for people who obviously break the electoral um, laws. We had a number of people, no arrests at least so, so far has been made. And just these lessons that we can take forward as a nation. Dr. Pati? Where are the two diplomats coming from? Mark Green and Johnny Carson. Both of them have been diplomats in Africa. Green in Tanzania, Ambassador Carson in Nigeria. Both of them were writing their opinion for the Woodrow Wilson Center, which is a foreign policy think tank in Washington, D.C. Number three, both ambassadors 
were part of the, uh, inst the Republican, International Republican Institute and National Democratic Institute joint mission to Nigeria to observe the February 25 uh, presidential and national assembly elections. So this is what informed my people na the video na on a new watch for me so on a see what you apple for inside the video all right my people are going to like to end the video for you and if you never subscribe you cannot subscribe so that i don't go miss any latest this we are the upload on a bye bye till i come on our next time bye guys guys my next video bye guys